afraid of Amsterdam you'll hear, and that's okay because it was written for an Amsterdam crowd in an Amsterdam theater by an Amsterdam poet. Okay, you're about to watch a staged reading. We've got our own recipe at Theater Cost at how we do staged reading. The actress came in five hours ago and they had no idea which play they were going to play or which part, which characters they were going to play. Uh, we went through the skip once in one big rehearsal and now we're going to show you the result. So, things can go wrong. Bear with us and we'll improvise if things go wrong. And what you must know as well, we've only got four actors and about 20 characters. So each actor has to play three, four, five different characters. Don't worry, I'll tell you at the advance of every scene which part you're, or which characters you're about to see. And you can look, look in the chat as well. In the chat, we'll post which scene you'll see and which character you'll see. So probably it won't be any problem at all and we'll introduce it left and right. So don't worry about that. Okay, another thing. This play we're about to play is all about economics. It's all about stock trade, prices. And uh, right now we're in the heart of the Amsterdam Financial Center, the old stock market. This stock market was built over here in 1900. Um, and before that day, there was another stock market. Was not, the new stock market is just opposite. Uh, and the old stock market in the 17th century, in the 18th century, used to be over here as well. So we're very pleased we are, well, able to play over here. But although the show is about economics, it's a comedy about a stock market, it doesn't take place in a stock market. It takes place in a coffee house. King Campois. It used to be a coffee house on the Kalverstraat, which is the busiest shopping street of Amsterdam. The coffee house isn't there anymore, but it was the hub up for stock traders in the 18th century. Over there, the deals were made. Not in the stock market itself, over there, in King Kampuan, the coffee house, not a coffee shop, mind you. And we've created our own coffee house over here. This will be our King Kampuan. What you must know, Peter Langerdijk takes us to 1720, so 200 years ago. 200 years ago, the big, the first big economic bubble of Europe bursted. You may know the tulip mania, the, 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 the big bubble about tulips in Holland. Well, that was in the 17th century, and it was just in Holland. But this bubble was all throughout Europe. It started in Paris, France, of course. They created a government trading company called the South Sea Company. And it was about trade in the Americas. And people invested in this company, although it didn't do anything up to that point. So people invested in Paris in the South Sea Company. And they speculated. They speculated, okay, we invested in this company. And, and are the stock prices going to rise? Or are they going to fall? And they not only invested in Paris, but also in London, Hamburg and Amsterdam. And in Holland they thought, well, what they can do in Paris, we can do in Holland as well. We can create our own companies as well, and you can invest, and we can do this in small town, small Dutch towns like Medenblik or Enkhuizen. And the bubble built up, and the economy got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and it was about to burst. But it didn't burst yet. And this is the moment when Peter Langerdijk wrote his play. The bubble, wasn't bar bar the bubble was still intact, but he thought any moment now this is going to go wrong. And he wrote a comedy about all this hysteria in the stock exchange. And that's what you're about to see. I'll take you to an Amsterdam canal house, a beautiful house. Just ignore this bar for the first act. The first act is in a beautiful Amsterdam canal house. And over there, there lives an Amsterdam merchant, a rich merchant, and it's called Bonaventure. He's got all the money he wants, but he likes to speculate. He likes to gamble. And his brother-in-law, Nobleheart, says to him, Why? Why do you like to gamble? It's only wind, this trade. Well, if it's only wind, nothing can go wrong. Oh, noble heart, 
Stop all the snorting, complaining and criticizing. What matter is it to you that we want to do business in the South Seas? I am your brother, Bonaventure. I want to advise you as a friend. Listen, this trade I regard as nothing more than wind. You are right. It is only wind. But one who wants to receive a high premium from those of those insane madmen who are so full of wind must seize the opportunity. I, like you, think they are mad, but in the meantime, I'm filling my coffers. You receive a premium? But say, will you be able to deliver? How deliver? I consider this money as good as made. Yes, as long as you're making money. You're, you're, you're a great lord. But how will you manage, Mr. Bear Trader, when stock prices rise? I do not expect they will. You will find out when it's too late. Well, well, I pray you, tell me, on what foundation does all this work stand? For me, it's a mystery. It's built on wind and on absolutely nothing, and therefore prices must fall. The harder it blows, the more grist to my will. But say, have you thought about the two men who have approached your daughter? Is the gentleman Hendrik or the gentleman Windbag more to your liking? I will thank you not to delay me with such trifles. Time is money. If you want to talk about the South Sea, insurance, banking, or the West Indy Company, then I'll join in. Mm. In any event, it is time you made the decision. I will say it again. Time is money, so stop with this droning. These days, in just one instant, in one little moment, I can make a million or I can lose it all. I have just lost about 150,000 guilders in order to listen to a solicitor, a babbler, who came to my house just as I was leaving. I asked him if he had been to the dam and had heard how high the prices of South Sea stock had leapt. <sighs> and in comes a noble heart's clerk, of Bonaventure's clerk, his office clerk, and he tells us the latest news about the stock prices of the South Sea Company. Peter. Oh, Mr. Bonaventure. Why the sweat on your brow? Oh, uh, a, a fisherman has come from uh, Wyk op Zee, who, who heard from himself yesterday at noon in London that there was a bidding on ch shares in the South Sea Company. 1100. <laughs> the, the fisherman is a rogue who has been paid to create a stir with trickery and by that ruse to get rid of some shares. But have you been to the coffee house yet? Oh, oh yes, certainly. Uh, but it was so crowded that I couldn't find space to stand. In London, I know South East stocks are dropping. Uh, you must go to get broker Griffin. Let Griffin. collect a premium from his friend. What? More premiums? I serve myself with this wind. Go, Peter, and tell him that I am expecting him. I reckon he's still in Queen Campoa. Okay. <sighs> Bonaventure tells Nobleheart he's got even more irons in the fire. He has sent his bookkeeper, Chris Payne, out into the country to invest in new startups in small towns like Enkhuizen, Gouda, Purmerend, Edam, Alkmaar. I will say it again, you are ruining yourself. Well, that may be so. I implore you to find amusement. I hear my wife and daughter, so please stay. Uh, I must write my oh, friend's yeah. at once. <laughs> what? There's no meal today. Should I wait that long? No, uh, I will send Chris Spain there on a pink boat with a stock news report. I expect that faithful servant at any moment. He has traveled to Horn, whatever, some business. 
Is it possible? And that commercial company? Certainly, because I see great advantages there. Hmm. Bonaventure's wife, Beatrice, she worries. She worries about all this speculation. And she doesn't really understand what's happening. And that's why her brother, Nobleheart, will tell her, will explain in detail to her and to us, thank God, what is happening at the stock exchange. What is all this speculation about? What are these premiums and these actionists? <sighs> Meanwhile, the daughter of Bonaventure and Beatrice, Hillegonde, has two suitors who well, are making their advances. Oh, oh brother noble heart! Oh, what about the kind of us? My husband, he does nothing but dream of the sound of the sea. And in the night, he, he jumps up ten times. Pay another ten percent through the bank, he hollers. Do, do you want another one at fifty to buy at a thousand in the future? Speak to me. Think of the interest. And then, and then, he hollers again. The West or Maiden Blick, a dumb but fine. Did I not buy it to Howda? I beg you, dear noble heart, that you explain why this craze is and what this premium means. Well, Beatrice, listen now. It has been like this in Holland once before, that many have been driven by a wondrous spirit to, to waste so much money on flowers that you would be shocked if one were to say how much. A tulip, a hyacinth, was sometimes worth a thousand pounds when their white petals were broken by, by delicate stripes. By, by this craziness, has been forgotten uh, with time. And when its memory intrudes, no one wants to admit it for the world. Yet, a spirit has again come knocking, surpassing that former craze in madness. In France and in England, one can find men of finance who receive money on the credit of papers that they issue in order to decrease the debt of the kingdom and pay for it at the same time. These are called shares, which annually pay a return, be it much or little. Yeah, but, but well, why does this create such a stir? <laughs> Because many people imagine that the South Sea Company's trade will flower and be worth much more over time, along with other businesses uh, on which one hopes to make a fortune by speculation. But, but it seems odd to me that our people would trouble themselves with such matters. <laughs> you know that one lunatic, lunatic uh, begets another. And, and madmen become rich. The wise stand by, perplexed that what yesterday was worth a hundred is now worth seven hundred, and by tomorrow may be worth half of that price again. One who deals in this trade, be he ever so wise, I deem mad. While he in his wisdom must lose unless he can float over the sea on a mat of straw. Yes, but it has come to my attention that in this trade, those who own shares drive prices up and only sell for a high price. But what, pray tell, does the word premium mean? One might call it um, ready money. Re ready money? Uh, why, yes. It is paid up front by which the one who sells shares agrees to deliver them at a certain price and on a specific date. Should the buyer wish to receive them, if the price goes up, the buyer will demand the shares. If the price drops, he loses only the premium. Well, but that is just betting on whether prices will rise or fall. Oh, 
I hope that my husband will not be led so far astray that he would wager his capital for such stakes. Patience, sister. Whether he will lose or keep his money still hangs in the balance. Your marriage contract is there to cover you. But say, yes. niece, aren't you soon to be given in marriage? Oh, uncle, for shame. You, you may as well declare your choice. I know your suitors. And if I'm not mistaken, one uh, is Sir Ken Campois, dressed in elegance and splendor. He hails from France, I believe carried on the winds of the Mississippi, which blew him to England, and he now has landed here. Oh, do you mean Mr. Windbag? Yes, yes. I know that he frequents this house. But I also know that Hendrik is spraying you court. Yes. Hmm. He cuts a very fine figure. He's reasonable, pious and good-natured, and he's well worthy of a young lady like my niece, Hillegond. Yes, my father favours Windbag's fortune, which amounts to more than two million, if we are to take him at his word. You are right. Nowadays, one speaks only of millions. Yes. It is paper, or is it specie, or is it simply to melons. Listen, when it comes to money, I warrant Hendrik has more than Windbag, whose treasure is as light as a feather. He follows your father and does nothing but extract premiums. I shall hold my tongue for now, but I will soon disclose my preference. So, Hillegonde has two suitors, the good Hendrik and Lord Windbeck. Lord Windbeck enters the house of Bonaventure and it's not really clear if he's coming for Hillegond or just to talk about business with her father Bonaventure. We'll see, but anyway, he's a bit too enthusiastic with creating a stir around him. Where is Sir Bonaventure? I must speak with him at once. Yes. Oh, no, the West! The West! The West! The West! The West! Oh, madame, I have done you wrong. I pray forgive me. I have neglected to greet you. The West! 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 Oh, my foot! My sir, my good sir. My foot! The West! The West! The West! The West! Oh, sir! What is the matter with you? Oh, 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 get the barber surgeon. I have sprained my foot in all this oh, uproar. Oh, oh, there is the surgeon who shaves you every day. Oh, oh surgeon. Come, my master, make work of it. Oh, you would advance me too. I no longer practice the trade of shaving. <laughs> I have become a gentleman now. Ma foi, I. One a thousand Louis d'or in a can come point. How come now? No, you can I. Oh, I will fetch another. Oh, now he thinks he is king of the Walloons because he has money. But perhaps it is just wind. Okay, do it now, and I'll acknowledge the favor as a friend. Monsieur, I will do it to oblige you. Now, come, girl. You can have it. Feet, 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 quick, quick, bring me the bandage. Uh, please, please take me to the nearest room, and master, do your best. Hmm. Oh, a dumb, a dumb! Oh, the West! The West! The West! Bonaventure is actually run over by all this craziness. And now, we'll go back to Hillegond and her two suitors. She talks with Hendrik. She loves Hendrik. But she wants something in return. She wants him to make sure that her father and all his speculations, that all the risks are taken away. And he may, has to make sure this happens. And while they're talking about this, 
Windbag enters the other suit. Oh, I pray you, Hendrik, what's wrong with these people? No, they are not drunk. They're mad with excitement. <laughs> Madam, they are constantly puffed up by the wind. But the worst is that, that it doesn't stop with these fools. It has become an epidemic that has blown over from France. Where these sorts of people are no longer just a minor nuisance. But my, my lovely, since chance has afforded me a moment alone with you, say, may I hope that one day you will make my happiness complete? Oh, but, oh, like you, I, I must arm myself with patience. But you must know, my choice depends upon my father's will. Yet, I prefer you above Windbag. Oh, yes. Indeed. Oh. I will go further and say that I loathe him. Can you, with the help of my uncle who does not dislike you, find a way to free me from this obligation? I would be forever in your debt for your care and trouble. Dare I hope that my fair one loves me? Know that for such a prize, I would bind my heart to you. Oh, enchanted moment, my love. All that you could ask of me, my lovely one, will come to pass. You love me? And I hear this now when least expected. Oh! My fortune, my life, all is at your service. Well, my dear Hillegond, what must I venture? You must go to King Campois and seek, with the help of good friends, to discover how deeply my father is involved in stock trading. Come, let us go inside and speak to Uncle Nobleheart and see what we must do. Madame. Might I have the pleasure of speaking with you alone? Oh, Lord Windbag. <laughs> well, you shall never hit your target with such rudeness. Sir, as you can see, <laughs> I'm in company. <laughs> and your intentions have been made clear enough to me. Well, I mark that my fellow suitor is best able to charm you. I am not here to listen to your reproaches. It appears that your heart is bent on me, but in the meantime, you speak with a command that you have not won over me. Why have you begun your suit with my father? How was I to know, you being father's best friend, that you frequent this place because you have romantic intentions? It is not evident, sweet girl, that my eyes betray the love in me that your beauty has awoken. Sweet girl, how dare he so shameless? Hush. I know the ways of courtship, and should one of you two be bold enough to start a quarrel, that one shall never possess me. Then I shall be quieted. And I request this also of you. All right then, my lady. I shall also be quiet. <laughs> As you command. <clears throat> but am I not the one who could make you happiest? For all that you desire, I can provide. Honoured, served, and protected as befitting your elevated station. I possess a fortune well exceeding that of many. You shall live as a princess among other ladies. And I shall add magnificently to your value. What beautiful fruits are produced by your shares. You build castles in the air on premiums. But I fear that the wind of folly is turning. And imagined profits will be blown away with one gust. And I shall go from princess to chambermaid in the end. My lady, that cannot be. <laughs> the worst! The, the worst! 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 The
I must speak to these uh, uh, people. Oh, my stars. That's how we enter the second act and the coffee house of King Campois. Ha! I'm the main servant here. You can call me Jan. If you like anything, ask for Jan. I've got Geesje over there who will make some coffee if you like. Tobacco, we've all got it for you. Oh, and there's our regular, Fransje. He's a hunchback, and he has his own way of making money out of his own box. been smacked in the head by a windmill blade in this wind. Huh? Wait what? till it's Sheriff Tuesday, Francia. What? Do you mean to say that I do this for naught? <laughs> you are wrong. Oh, well, I see that fools are winning the biggest fortunes and I have no money. You have no money? Thus, I shall have to start something new. You in stock trade? No, listen. Recently in Paris, there was a gent with a hunchback, just like mine. And he filled his purse with his hump. And not by getting rid of it, no. By using it. And there was no business conducted in Paris from which my brother did not profit. Because people could ride on his hump back with ease. 
like him, I can serve as a writing desk. You mean and like provide him? pen and ink as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, that's a clever plan, Francher. What people won't dream up to to make money in these days. <sighs> And now one sees that bold rascal can make themselves up through funds and grow now that they can hold of coins in one night like mushrooms. A mushroom? Oh, like hey, mushroom. Peter! Peter. Oh, yes. How's yes. Mr. Bonaventure? Oh, uh, uh, very great. Oh, Thank okay. you. Uh, well, 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 that's uh, good to uh, know. Uh, uh, could, could you give us a pipe of tobacco? Tobacco? Oh, yes. Geesje, tobacco, please. Oh, oh, oh and coffee. Coffee? Uh, 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 piping oh, hot, oh, please. Oh, give yeah. me a coffee, yes. please. Geesje, have you got a coffee for me? Uh, mind yourself. Don't burn yourself. It's oh. very hot. Don't oh, yes, burn yes. yourself. Come oh. on, do not burn thank yourself, you. Monsieur. Uh, thank you, thank you. Oh, yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, um, yeah. Haven't you seen uh, uh, Griffin? The broker. Griffin the broker? Yes. No. No, I haven't. But I think uh, you will be here shortly. Oh. <laughs> Look. Oh. There oh. is the man himself. Oh. My Hello. good friend Griffin. Monsieur, do I find you here? Give your patron this paper when he gets home. A contract for a thousand pounds. He will be in want of it. I will receive the premium when it is signed. A pipe of tobacco. Case your tobacco, please, for this man over here. No, he, he shall not do it. You must not think that you can pester him into folly. I'm assured that South Sea shares uh, will not drop. Give me coffee. Coffee? Oh, Geesje, have you got another coffee? Come on, keep it going. Do not burn yourself, monsieur. Do not burn yourself. The coffee is coming, sir. Yes. Are you buying or selling? I buy and sell South Sea shares. Oh, come on, for heaven's sake. Out with it. I'm selling Monica Dump. And me too. Do not pressure me. Three and a half. The hell with you! I offer it you for two, and once I turn my back, the deal's off. A quarter. Griffin, stay here and speculate in good faith for the life of you. How many shares? Six, by God. I will sell them to you. I will sell you Muiden and Schindam uh, with your leave. Hands off me. Do you not want to make money? I have shares from the Bahamas. Is what you say possible? Do you not want to make an offer? Well, you don't know what you're talking about. You should make a premium offer on South Sea stock at 700. I'll take the papers from my bag now. Stand and wonder. Put your glasses on your nose and smell what's on the paper. Well, offer 40. No. Well, how much then, friend? Listen. Let me offer 30 to receive or deliver. Another six. No, I cannot do that. Not on my life. I will sell you Rotterdam. What are you offering for Gouda? Griffin, take your hat off from me. For you there is uh, Utrecht. I bid one. Uh, I bid one and a half. Oh, you mad man. I will punch your silly snaps. You are crazy. You don't want to make money while you can. Rub the dirt of your eyes like a man. Oh, Mr. Windbag. Hi, Peter. You're here hi. again. Yes. Hi, hi, oh, hi. It's very scary. Yes. A lot of traders. Would you like a cup of coffee? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Her. With sugar? sugar? Uh, yes, please. Oh, can I have a cup of coffee, oh. coffee with sugar again? Mm -hmm. Yes. I still have one. Thank you. OK, we'll get lumps of sugar for you. All right, are you done? Oh! Ramskolbroek. Oh, Ramskolbroek. Uh, no, no, no. Rotterdam. Rotterdam. Oh, God. I'll sell you Enkhuizen and Adam. I was wondering why I hadn't seen that fool before. Bank. By November. Bank. Bank. Rotterdam. The bank. Rotterdam. Bank. Oh, are you trying to push me out of the bank? Now, Pete, will you give me a small share? 
of the bank? No, 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 no. Let me through because I, I have to depart shortly. Now that you understand, you can speak to Bonaventure yourself. Kampen, Gils, the West. Rotterdam, 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 Rotterdam. Rotterdam. Uh, uh, I'm afraid I will break my neck here. Oh. Best, the best stay here, Peter. You cannot get through anyway. <laughs> A, a cup of coffee, coffee, please! A cup of uh, coffee. Oh, Kesha, another coffee, please. please. Yes. A pipe, a pipe, pipe of tobacco. Do not oh. burn yourself, Michel. Do not oh, thank you, burn thank you, yourselves. Thank you. oh. I. Oh. I, I see him coming. coming. What? Oh. Who? Oh. Mr. Crispin. Crispin. Mr. Crispin. Crispin. Oh, yes. Yes. You at home? You at home over there? Do you remember Crispin? He wasn't the first act. Well, he. It wasn't actually in the first act. They talked about Chris Payne in the first act. He's, uh, he's the bookkeeper of Mr. Bonaventure. And Mr. Bonaventure has sent him into the country to invest in startups. And invested he has. He's become a better man of it at the cost of Mr. Bonaventure. <laughs> and now Chris Payne is back in Amsterdam. And where does he go? To my cafe. King Campois. Ah, Monsieur Crispin. Who still wants to buy shares in Horn at 8%? I know the price will rise. The company is more valuable than Schiedam. And at least as good as shares in Alkmaar, my friend. <laughs> the bubble, the bubble, a blessed bubble. The bubble, the bubble, a blessed bubble. The bubble, the bubble, a blessed bubble. And who is buying wind? <laughs> I am offering five and three quarters. Will you take three shares? Um, what do you say, Master Young? Oh, I will pass on these. And good luck with your purchase. Now, Master Young, come, speak up. Well, I'm not accustomed uh, to finding fault, but, but is the man any good? I will stand as guarantor. Good luck with your purses. My good man, it is done. Window here. Well, I must have something for my troubles. <laughs> well, well, Crispin, <laughs> you know how to live. <laughs> that, that is splendid. Oh. But you know, my good Crispin, half of the cut is coming to me. <laughs> well, you sniffed that out wondrously quickly. <gasps> I will tell my master. I will tell my master. I will master what you're up to there. Oh, listen, listen, la, 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 la. Do not make too much haste. <gasps> In this little purse, Petey, it's come oh. to you. And it's full of golden ducats. Oh. If you prove trustworthy, there will be more. Oh. In these times, plain dealing is no virtue. Use your wits too and play tit for tat. We will shortly change our attire and play the role of two splendid gentlemen. <gasps> ah! <gasps> you are an honest man, Crispin. <laughs> I see that clearly. <laughs> but if our master becomes aware of this deception, he will sack us both. What should we care when we are rich and we please ourselves? <gasps> Consider it done, Crispin! <laughs> I shall take you into my company. Thank but you. I will slip away now, for I see noble heart yonder. Oh, yes. Oh. As Bonaventure's servant, Peter, leaves King Comfort, noble heart is entering the building, and Windbag is awaiting him. He wants to trade, of course. Mr. Nobleheart, well young. Ah, okay, young. Mr. Windbag, you're still here. Give me a cup of coffee and two clean pipes. Two clean, a uh, case, a cup of coffee, please, and two clean pipes. Yes, please. Good gentlemen, what are you doing here? I, I, I do not understand. Nobleheart, what is your offer for South Sea stock? Shout it out. I, 
Do not trade in wind. What gentlemen, do you want to? Discount? I offer not a single farthing. Do you want to, uh, to discount? Do you have a letter of exchange? Uh, yes. Is it genuine? Uh -huh. What is your desire? Well, I'm two million rich, and I have money to invest. I demand two percent. To be paid a month after the offer? <laughs> There's no decency in that. A gentleman would ask a half of three quarters. Go to Rotterdam, and I have a discounted there. <laughs> Nor did you. I must do it. I've been everywhere. I just spoke with an impertinent beast who dared demand an 8% cut for credit. Yes, money evaporates. <laughs> he was right, sir, in my opinion, because people will pay a great deal for wind that quickly blows over, and then you will learn that money must be properly valued. See there. You can collect your money from... You can collect... <laughs> you can collect uh, your money from my cashier. Tomorrow, he will promptly pay the sum agreed upon there. Hmm... Delft? Rotterdam! Rotterdam! Ah! Uh, the Gouda! Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The South! The South! The South! Yeah, the South. Okay, oh! 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 oh. Uh. Nobleheart is actually here in our my cafe to make a deal with Griffin. And Griffin is Bonaventure's broker. And Nobleheart wants to retrieve all Bonaventure's contracts so there are no debts left. Griffin can't understand why. Now, ah, Griffin. Now, ah, Mr. Griffin. <coughs> you are alone here. And good friends, I have a plan from which you shall profit. Dear sir, I am, as you know, an honest broker. I serve my masters faithfully. So command me as you wish. I have never had the honor to negotiate for you, but I will show myself to be a man of honor. How many transactions has my brother made with you? Oh, let me see here in my little account book. Mm, six, sir, of a thousand pounds <laughs> and seven for five hundred. Is it possible? How is it, dear sir, that this surprises you? It is not much. Consider that he is a bad trader. Sir Windbag, who was just here, your niece's suitor, has ten times more. One must take risks in this world. In this way, your brother is already enjoying uncommon success. But I'm afraid that he will miss his mark. Take flight? and land flat on his back with his legs in the air. Oh, he need have no fear of that. Oh. Listen here. My brother's credit is a matter of greater concern. If you really are, as you say, committed to my service, see to it that you retrieve all of his contracts. Now is your chance, sir. As long as you are ready to commit, what percentage are you willing to pay above the premium that he received? South Sea stock is now up to seven. Come. I will take them over. No. No, dear sir. That cannot be. They will rise in value shortly. Well, that's a pretty fabrication. <laughs> now you say that the prices will go up and everyone else say... They will fall. Oh, be quiet, you fool. I will give you half of the cut. I demand 60% for my profit. Mm, I will bid 30. 50. No, another five. For 40. No. Well, I am satisfied with that. We have good friends. And I have my orders to deliver on these terms. 
I shall see it to that the money is transferred to your account. Yes, and that's how we enter the last scene of Act Two. And Mr. Chris Payne enters again. He's been out in the country investing in startups and he's made a lot of money for himself. So much money, Mr. Chris Payne, that now he's creating his own startup. You, you can join as well if you like, and join in his startup. Halfway the scene, a farmer passes my cafe and he doesn't understand what the hell they're selling over here. <laughs> Silence, man, and listen. Spread the word about this project. Those inclined to sign will be met with satisfaction. I am the one who offers shares in this honorable bubble company. I will discount letters of exchange and insure ships as well as houses, barns, turf and wood, warehouses, beasts, young and old, and those who fear the violence of Turks, they can rest assured that we will do business beyond all expectations with the Spanish, the French and Portuguese. Never shall one lose on these wares. The ships are presently built. We are already masters of the salt. And one can make prices even rise higher because all must be supplied by us. One seeks a pearl fishery in order to be well insured against loss. Those who wish to subscribe to this bubble are not obliged to stay in, but are welcome to be served by the wind, should they think it's advisable. And together we, bubble farmers all, make a wise and comfortable company and with wondrous grace seek to inflate the stock market of the nation. Now, men and brothers, let us begin and put your subscription in this box. Mr. Director, say on your life, uh, here's the contract, I shall pay you a premium. Yeah, what, what thing is this? I'm not familiar with this, senor. A contract. Yeah, I don't know this. Come on, wipe your ass with it. Sir, hold on, take it. For heaven's sake, I do not know you. Where have we ever seen your credit? Stop this, stop it. I believe these people are deranged or crazy. Monsieur, go away. Huh? Because the company is full, we've eaten all the meat. Uh, now uh, you can chew on the bones. The deck has been stacked. Is that a company? <laughs> the profits go directly into their pockets. Like a sleight of hand. Who wants to buy? Who? Who wants to buy? Who? Oh! Hey! Hey, you're not from over here. No. no. My name is Gijs. You're Gijs? Yes. Oh, are you I'm a farmer? farmer. I'm a farmer, indeed. You're a farmer. Oh, welcome well, hey, to uh, my cafe. What are you selling here? Say, man, what kind of business is this? <laughs> farmer, yes. here you can acquire great wealth. So, what is uh, this uh, you're selling then? What? They are stocks. Stocks, my friend. Stockings? No, stocks, oh, my friends. And what is? What are stocks? What kind of food is this? Eh, let me taste it. It's, it, 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 it to see if it suits me. Eh? Okay, bring me a half a farting's worth. Of Are you fooling with us? Certainly not. Honestly. Honestly. What kind of drink is it? Uh, I just want to taste it, mate. Oh, this is no drink. It is pieces of paper, my friend. Ah, now I understand. Now that you explain it to me. Eh? The, 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 oh, they are little packages. I see. Are they like the things that uh, quacks sell us on, uh, on, uh, on, the, on the stands? Right? <laughs> huh? What now? What now are you laughing? Whoa! Come on. Well, I'm not at my ease here. And I do not know the city. What kind of people are these? They are stock jobs. Actionists. Action? <gasps> Is it possible? Is it possible what you are saying? Are they atheists? Atheists? No. Ooh, our sexton priest preaches about them often. And I wish I understood what goes on in those people's minds. Well, if you like, you can buy a share of a bubble company. 
Well, uh, do they sell by the pint or by the pitcher? <laughs> it must be tasty. <laughs> of this I am sure. <laughs> it must be because you have such a large business going on here. Ah, oh, dears, let me have a taste of it. Is it delicious? Now, farmer, I wouldn't like to see you more carried away. Each share, matey, costs around 200 pounds. 200 pounds? That's way too much, even if, it, even if it were really healthy. No, no, no one will buy this. Then, farmer, take your leave. But, but, Monsieur, Monsieur Gouverneur, before you take your leave, show me once and for all what you are selling. Here, you dumb yokel. Look, this is paper. <laughs> Though I'm just a peasant, I understand. It must be a, a, a publication. Is it now worth as much as it says on the paper? Yes. If you buy it, you can make a lot more money with this note. Hey, I, of course I want to win, but, but my money is also dear to me, eh? If I were to invest a pile of money, then you must at once provide two good guarantees. I do not provide guarantors. Oh, guarantors, yeah. I do not but, provide them. But, but, but if you're on a spree on, and wasting money, all I will have left is, is paper. But how much interest will give you uh, to me over the years? Farmer, if I knew myself, I would tell you we would be in business. Huh? If we win a lot, you win a lot. Listen, everyone will get their share, but farmer, I will not trouble myself with you any longer. Well, you aren't going to get my money out of uh, <laughs> my purse so easily. I would rather buy livestock with my money, good friend. And as uh, for your little papers, I will not put my money at stake. Who will buy them? <laughs> You're a fool, farmer, and I'm leaving. Well, uh, good day, um, Monsieur Gouverneur. Well, I, uh, I take leave of you fools. <laughs> Rotterdam! The South! The, 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 the West! The West! Rotterdam! We'll leave the coffee house for now as we enter Act 3, the final act. We're back in the house of Bonaventure and we're with Hillegond and her suitor Hendrik. Hendrik tells her that her uncle Nobleheart has made the deal. Everything is all right. There are no financial risks. Also, the other suitor, Windbag, enters and he has, has another go at courting her. Hillegond, my true love, all that we wished for has come to pass. Banish all of your fears, there's nothing pressing you. We now have Griffin's shares in hand. You have saved my father from imminent disgrace, although if he knew he would take it amiss, sir. Oh, I'm thankful to you for preserving his honor. No, 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 madam, I thank you. <coughs> but who now intrudes? Where is Monsieur Bonaventure? It is of great importance that I speak with him now. I have seen him neither in the country nor in town. He is neither in Café Quincampoix, nor the cherry tree, nor on the dumb square. I am surprised that he is yet to make an appearance. He could now make a million. Fie upon him that he does not arrive. Say, where are his wits? Where yours are, my good sir. His wits are abroad. Is it possible? Well, how could, be the, how could the gentleman make such a mistake? Oh, but say, mademoiselle, how is it possible? How could it happen that I did not see you sooner? I beg you not let my heart bleed for such a neglect. I was rather confused. <laughs> Although you are here, your heart, sir, is in King Kampong. Oh, this heart, this heart, that courtship and joy impelled her hither. That heart is so full of shares that it would burst. Oh, you mean love. Oh, but hark, I hear Sir Bonaventure. Yes, and Windbag is actually there for Mr. Bonaventure, and he excites him so much with his talks about the premiums going up and the stock prices going up that Bonaventure wants to go out, but he's hurt his foot, so there's only one way. Windbag will call his coach driver, but the coach driver isn't that willing. <laughs> My good windbag. How now, dear sir? 
Where is the drive, that fire to make you happy this instant? Then you can now get your hands on the largest premiums. And I hear from London that all is coming to nothing. No. Come, let us buy from everyone offering a premium. I have put it out amongst the people that the value of shares is rising. My friends are in on the rumor and have raised their prices. But when they have all these premiums in the box, they will all sell. Say, what do you think of such a ruse? Come on, let's go. My, my friend, my, Mr. Windberg, I cannot be, uh, I cannot until my foot is healed. Your foot is hurt? Your, your foot? How so, sir? Have you forgotten? It was you who ran over me. Oh, well, pardonnez-moi. For a thousand ducats, I wish this had not happened. I just made a million, but I shall let my coach come to the door to fetch you. Lackey, lackey, fetch my coach. Oh, this cannot, this, this cannot be. Her father must stay indoors. Oh, sir, you're not leaving. What would, what would you be up to in the middle of the night? Oh, my, my fortune depends on it. I must take my leave if and I must go forth on crutches. But how is it that I do not see Chris Payne arrive? It is as though he stays away to persecute me. He, he was to go to Horn in order to make some entries on my account. And since I received this letter, by my reckoning, three days have already passed. How, good sir, was he meant to buy some of these shares for you? Well, no, to subscribe on my behalf. I authorized him to do so. You will wait a long time for him to come back. He fears punishment. How so? I hope that Chris Payne will not cheat me. Uh, he's a gentleman and, and now does nothing but ride. Flying first to Rotterdam and then to Gouda, Schiedam and Alkmaar. And oh, I know he serves your, you truly. Did you immediately send him to Maidenblik? When he in your service went to London in a pink boat? Did you yourself not dress him up today as a seigneur in order to make him a director of the bubble fund? Well, no. As I said, I have not laid eyes on him for a long time. Then, surely, you have been deceived. Because not an hour ago, I saw him in a cafe. In Café Quincampoix. Dressed as a man of fashion, cheating those in attendance so skillfully that everyone had to laugh. But I thought all of those affairs were conducted at your behest. Yet it appears that you had nothing to do with it. My behest? Well, I swear, if I get sight of him, he will feel the weight of what he has done. Where is that lazy dog of a coachman? Good sir. <laughs> The horses are in the stable. You cur, did you not receive my orders? <laughs> yes, sir, but not to keep you in suspense. I had such great good fortune with my shares that I have earned the honour of being treated as a magnificent gentleman. And before three days elapse, I will purchase a coach from one who is about to face ruin. <laughs> so... The coachman has become wealthy as well with all the speculations. And then the script says, four dancers costumed as tailors and wig makers enter the stage. Four dancers. Well, come, you gentlemen. Come now, dress me in finery and please this company with a new dance. Yes. Broker Griffin enters the house to collect promised shares. Um, the only problem is Lord Windbag doesn't seem to have them. 
And the only way out is to fight his way out. Bonaventure wants to pay up, although it will make him go bankrupt. But his honor is more important than his money. Forgive me that I disturb you at this late hour. My masters have burdened me with this errand, so lend me your ears. Master Windbag, I thought I would find you here. I've been sent by various good friends to demand nine shares in the South. How so they demand? What, what is this supposed to mean? You took the premium when they were worth 400, and now they are worth 700. Yes, and I can tell you, friend, that I do not understand this kind of folly. Me neither. But you must take it as you find it. They are ready to receive those shares. Yes, no, that is not so easily done. I must first receive shares from another counterparty, so wait another six months. I shall demand them from the gentleman with whom I do business, and when I receive my shares, you shall have them. That is reasonable. Wait for them. I will tell everyone all about this when the stock exchange is busy. I'm telling you, ma'am, torment me no longer, or I swear I shall run you through. You are a brute. A brute? I shall show you who is a brother. Be gone quickly before he breaks your neck and legs. No, I stay. By God, I death. Stop, stop, stop. I do not understand why you are fighting. I shall go to the sheriff to issue a complaint that you seek to pay me for shares with blows. Leave. I cannot permit fighting in my house. Demand the worthless shares for my brother, or as if it erst. Monsieur Bonaventure, I have also been given the task of demanding that you deliver all you have at 700%. How? What is that you say? Has everyone gone mad, or is there some kind of witchery, uh, witchery afoot? My brother, I think that you must value your credit so highly that you will make good to the demands for which he waits. Sir, the South Sea is rising. They are waiting for the moment. If... If that is true, brother, then I have lost everything. Britain, go, I will buy at 700%. My good sir, they have already reached 900. Just say, as Windbag is doing, that you have to receive shares from a third party and thereby postpone their demand. I beseech you, do not do this. Even if I am soon to lose my capital, credit is worth more to me. I shall never choose this path. But why have you led me into this danger? I did all that you advised. You are my broker. This is beyond me, all this folly. This one wins, that one loses, and I happily earn my commission. And that's how we get to the last scene of this comedy of Peter Langendijk. There's only one thing left to do. In this last scene, Chris Pine comes to the house of Bonaventure dressed as a rich merchant, not as a poor bookkeeper. And he confesses to Bonaventure he speculated with his money. But due to Mr. Noblehart's dealings, Nothing is lost. And then we're one actor short, so Noble Heart transforms, transforms to Hendrik again. And Hendrik will take his chance to ask for the hand of Hillegond at his father-in-law to, father to be 
Mr. Bonaventure. I was Bonaventure, your servant, before all this. My lord, I see you look on with amazement, but do not condemn me just yet. I have gained much with your money, of which you are yet ignorant, but make a demand, because you must know I'm ready to give you satisfaction in everything. My money. Chris Payne, my money. Have you dared to gamble with my money? Dear brother, rest assured, huh? you will not be damaged. Look at your contracts that I have redeemed. Be satisfied. If Crispin repays the losses, as is fitting, then he is free from suspicion of evil. And I shall do this. I know from Griffin how much money the damage is worth, which soon will reach your hand. Oh, dear sir, um, may I then hope for the hand of your sweet daughter? Give her your hand, but I want you never to sell wind. Viva the King of Flores!